Good day, everyone. Today, we will be looking back to the challenges of the elderly populations during the heights of COVID-19 pandemic and the new normal, but at the same time, learn from their strengths and how they are effectively coping on this very challenging period. It became evident early in the coronavirus pandemic that older age is a risk factor for becoming severely ill with COVID-19 and their odds of survival are the lowest due to weakened immune system, physical inactivity, and stress. Comorbidities which are very common in this age group, such as hypertension, diabetes, and pulmonary and cardiac diseases are the main underlying etiologies collectively in 32 to 60 percent of severe COVID cases. While the median age of confirmed COVID-19 cases in 2020 is 51 years old, fatality rates for those over 80 years of age is five times the global average. But the virus impact on older adults goes beyond a higher risk for serious infection. It also includes limited access to care for all health conditions, as well as considerable psychological, social, and economic hardships. Due to their vulnerability, older people have been subject to stricter isolation measures than other population groups. Stay-at-home restrictions and strict physical distancing have targeted older adults earlier, for longer, and more aggressively compared to younger age groups. For example, public health authorities banned older adults to enter supermarkets and grocery shops and introduced senior early shopping hours in pharmacies and other essential services. Although measures like social distancing and quarantines remain the most effective tactics for shielding the most vulnerable during this outbreak, age-based measures fail to take into account the negative impact that long periods of isolation will have on older people's physical, mental, and cognitive well-being. Social connectedness and engagement with other people are important to promote successful aging. However, this being directly challenged by physical distancing policies. The researchers found that even before the coronavirus, about a quarter of older adults fit the definition of socially isolated, which measures routine social contact. Conversely, researchers have found that robust social networks and interactions improve health for older adults. That's creating a difficult situation for older people who need protection from diseases like COVID-19 but may already be quite isolated. In a national poll done last June 2020 in the United States, more than half of older adults, 56% reported feeling isolated from others compared to 27% in 2018. The results of this poll suggest that the COVID-19 pandemic has had a substantial impact on feelings of lo loneliness including lack of companionship and isolation and social connections among older adults during the early months of the pandemic than in 2018, when those numbers were already worrisomely high. Chronic loneliness can adversely affect memory, mental and physical health, and longevity. So the concern here isn't just older people who may get sick. It's people who will experience a drop in their quality of life in response to the outbreak. It is also important to recall that the initial quarantine period in the Philippines overlapped with the Roman Catholic Lenten season, an extremely important holiday for Filipinos. Older Filipinos were unable to attend church services and observe traditional Holy Week religious practices thereby increasing their sense of isolation. For many older Filipinos, going to the church every Sunday, followed by family gatherings, is a tradition that they look forward to, but is now not possible, and this has added to a sense of sadness and yearning. Older Filipinos have also lost connection with their spiritual leaders, 
church peers, and volunteer work which may exacerbate feelings of uncertainty. The disruption of important day-to-day -day activities for older individuals can pose negative impact on elderly's cognitive impairment leading to poor mental health and may be vulnerable to develop symptoms of anxiety and depression. A study found that social isolation increased the level of anxiety with depressive symptoms in elderly individuals and that depression symptoms were more common in the elderly who felt lonely and lacked social support. In addition, factors such as uncertainties during the pandemic, the, the risk of virus transmission to oneself and family members, and the lack of drugs to treat the virus further increase anxiety levels of the elderly. Overall, during the early phase of pandemic, specifically the community quarantine poses symptoms associated with late-life anxiety and depression. However, it is important to note, and it was indicated on several researches that compared to younger population, surprisingly results show that younger age was a risk factor for worsened components of anxiety and depression compared to older ones. Another identified health risk with being at home is a decline in physical activity, which has a negative impact on older individuals. Staying at home leads to a more sedentary lifestyle, such as sitting a lot or spending more time watching TV, and engaging in unhealthy behaviors such as overeating, staying up late, and not getting adequate sleep or even increasing tobacco and alcohol use. Reduced physical activity and unhealthy behaviors are linked to increased morbidity and mortality in all, older individuals. Patients with COVID-19 who are, who are hospitalized are completely isolated in the ward and separated from their loved ones as no visitors are allowed in the hospital. Older Filipinos in the hospital with little capability of using digital technology have a difficult time adjusting to the isolation and minimal contact with their families. When they clinically deteriorate, it becomes extremely difficult to be alone, and particularly in the worst outcomes when a patient dies alone in the hospital. This is extremely difficult to cope with as nobody should die alone and families who are unable to see their loved ones before they die are at risk of complicated bereavement. Another aggravating factor for families left behind is the restriction on wakes and burials, which are traditionally week-long events filled with religious and ceremonial activities in the Philippines often leading to lack of closure over the death of their loved ones. The pandemic has had another devastating impact on this population, one that is less visible, frequently ignored, and often a source of stigma, elder abuse. A study in the American Journal of Geriatric Psychiatry suggests that one in five older people has experienced elder abuse during the pandemic, a jump of nearly 84% over pre-pandemic estimates. Group of researchers from Yale School of Public Health and Yale University conducted a survey of 897 people in the USA aged 60 years and older via two online platforms from April 23 through May 5, 2020. The researchers created a 10-item elder abuse assessment and asked participants if they experienced any of 10 possible incidents of elder abuse since the beginning of the pandemic. The incidents included whether someone close to them tried to hurt or harm them, no one wanted them around, whether they were afraid of someone in the family, whether someone had taken their money or belongings without their consent, and other indicators of abuse. Roughly 21% of the participants answered yes to at least one question during the assessment compared with 11.6% reporting past year abuse. Moreover, 5.4% of participants reported that someone tried to hurt or harm them during the pandemic compared with 1.6% in the past. 
the prevalence of financial abuse rose as well. 7.5% reported that someone had taken their money or belongings without their consent. Recognizing all uh, older adults as an at-risk category, the current pandemic has the potential to change the social representation of old age and reinforce ageism-based beliefs and attitudes among the population, including the elderly themselves. Ageism is defined as stereotypes, prejudice, or discrimination against, but also in favor of people because of their chronological age. Examples for ageist discourse and actions during the pandemic are manifold. Boomer remover, the old one spoiled statistics, stay home, save grandma. These are just some of the phrases that have been used in public discourse when it comes to the description of the COVID-19 with relation to older adults. Numerous commentaries have observed a considerable increase in ageism during the pandemic, ranging from outright discrimination such as the decision not to provide life-saving treatment on the basis of chronological age to more subtle, well-meant, but also impactful forms of patronizing such as strongly advising older people to self-isolate indefinitely regardless of health status. In a study by Falbo in 2021 entitled Live Experiences of Older Adults During the COVID-19 Lockdown, a qualitative study, one of the major findings reveals the traumatic consequences generated by labeling all older adults under one single at-risk category, neglecting inter-individual differences and diversity that exist through the life course and persist in late life, irrespective of chronological age. For most of study's participants, being associated with the fragile was inconceivable especially since older age today is no longer a synonym, synonymous of frailty but is often associated with an active social life, self-development, and fulfillment. Being categorized lab and labeled as the vulnerable was recognized by the participants as a source of victimization, discrimination, and exclusion. The instances of ageism which emerged during the crisis might have severe consequences above and beyond the current pandemic. Besides the long-standing evidence for the detrimental influence of ageism on the individual and society, perceived ageism during the pandemic is linked to increased anxiety and lower well-being and subjective health of older adults. While the changes and restrictions in daily life are noticeable and immense in many cases, digital tools and resources have been highlighted as possible means of mitigating the worst of the negative consequences. The use of technology to continue to stay in touch with family, friends, and loved ones has become an important way to combat these negative effects associated with prolonged loneliness and isolation. Virtual socializing and online events have become commonplace and have gone a long way to keeping people from being completely isolated while in lockdown. Online education has also become the new normal in many places as schools and universities turn to online classes to keep students' education on track. Healthcare has also turned to digital solutions and making both mental and physical healthcare available online has become more common and has been fairly successful in helping mitigate the negative effects of reduced healthcare access. This shift into the digital realm extends beyond just the healthcare sector. Online access to COVID-19 related news, grocery delivery services, group socialization, and many more services have become commonplace. However, one group likely to benefit the least from the digital alternatives are the elderly population who have significantly lower rates of internet usage and acceptance than other age groups. This results in a worrying paradox. The population most negatively affected by the COVID-19 pandemic 
are also the least likely to be able to access the resources put in place to mitigate the effects. This paradox can largely be attributed to the poor digital literacy skills found amongst the elderly population compared to younger groups, most commonly described as the digital divide. Research has pointed out that great digital divide is linked to poor healthcare in the present age. Many healthcare services, as mentioned, can be availed over the internet, including appointment booking, secured communication with a medical practitioner, paying bills, and the list goes on. However, people on the wrong side of digital divide, especially elderly, will continue to suffer from effective healthcare in the near future. This is because electronic healthcare will dominate in the not too distant future, but simultaneously aging will also increase. Even though the pandemic put the older population at greater risk compared to any age group, research has still showed that older people report better emotional experience than younger people. Several studies published over the last year have underlined this concept. Specifically, they were more likely to report feelings of calm, interest, and appreciation. The most striking difference was that older people reported experiencing negative emotions substantially less often than younger people. These findings hold when the society considered their perceived risk and other variables such as personality and employment status. So what makes older people more resilient to stress than younger populations? Two factors likely account for these age advantages. The first is experience. Older people have had more years to encounter stressful and negative experiences and they've had more time to learn how to cope with these experiences, as well as what works for them and what doesn't in times of stress. Another important factor is that older people experience changes in their motivations and goals. There is considerable evidence that older people are more motivated to focus on the good in their daily lives and accept rather than dwell on what's bad. Instead of focusing on and worrying about the future, older adults tend to prioritize goals about the here and now. Furthermore, a study of Fuller in 2020 highlighted the resilience nature of older adults in terms of their psychological coping and adaptability during the COVID-19 crisis. Consistent with theoretical perspective on coping in later life, their findings suggest that the majority of older adults perceive themselves to be coping well in the initial weeks of the pandemic. This study is finding that most older adults perceive themselves as coping well is also consistent with prior empirical research demonstrating high rates of proactive coping and adaptive coping strategies among older adults. The three types of coping that emerge, staying busy, seeking social support, and having a positive mindset are each consistent with proactive coping strategies intended to minimize the negative impact of the social distancing stressor. Staying busy and maintaining a daily routine were proactive strategies older adults use to keep themselves occupied and healthy, both physically and mentally. This coping strategy may be consistent with using distracting behaviors to redirect thoughts, which has been found to be an effective coping mechanism in the initial phases of disasters. However, beyond distraction, older individuals also describe staying busy as helping them to feel their life had meaning and purpose despite needing to stay isolated at home. This further suggested that older adults maintain their sense of well-being and identity by being able to maintain their daily patterns of living. Their desire for continuity was evident and developing a somewhat normative activity pattern was quite adapted in the circumstances. Similar to findings from the SARS epidemic, 
seeking social support was a key coping strategy used by the geriatric population. In the initial weeks of social distancing, older adults adjusted well by increasing communication with their social uh, with their support partners rather. Seeking social support during the COVID-19 pandemic seemed characteristic of resilience among these older adults. Moreover, this theme highlights the protective role of social networks during stressful times in accordance with the convoy model which suggests people benefit from greater social support during major life events. Though it is frequently thought that older adults cannot adapt to new technology, it was noted in most literature that most adults were willing and even open to the idea about using technology to foster social connection. The final coping theme that was identified was having a positive mindset, indicated the prominence of emotion-focused coping within the older research participants. Consistent with prior research on SARS, these older adults were more likely to engage in emotion-focused coping than problem-focused coping, which is adaptive in a widespread pandemic that an individual cannot readily assume. Positive coping was common among participants ranging from acceptance of the situation to optimism about the future. Moreover, this theme is in accordance with socio-emotional selectivity theory in the case of COVID-19 pandemic, many older adults appear to prioritize positive emotions and thought processes even more explicitly as they acknowledge their greater mortality risk due to the virus. Similar to research following Hurricane Katrina in the U.S., older adults appear to actively shift their thought processes and perspectives to foster more positive emotions. Moreover, within this theme, the salience of faith to facilitate coping was predominant, consistent with other research findings that religious coping is often effective in large-scale crises. These high positive perceived ratings of coping may be indicative of enhanced emotional regulation in that older adults appear to successfully protect against experiencing emotional distress related to COVID-19. For instance, despite acknowledging social distancing as less than ideal, older individuals most frequently indicated they were coping well with this distressing situation, suggesting an ability to be emotionally resilient despite the occurrences. So what younger people can learn regarding stress and well-being from older populations? We have to remember that time becomes more and more precious as we age. The older we get, the less time we have left, and it may be beneficial to focus our time energy and motivation on what's meaningful and less time dwelling on the things that we have no control. It's important to note that this type of shift isn't a denial or avoidance of the negative aspects. It's more about not becoming overwhelmed by the negative and focusing more attention and energy on what brings joy and pleasure. As the peri-pandemic period continues, how can older people best be supported? It is evident that older people care more than any other age group about emotionally meaningful aspects of life. In the midst of this pandemic, we expect that for older people, being unable to hug their grandchildren, spend time with treasured friends, and engage in meaningful activities is more detrimental to well-being than anxiety and fear of contracting COVID. The solution for older adults is to get back to engaging with life in whatever ways possible. This might mean connecting with friends and family, even virtually, and spending time on activities that bring meaning. Keep the elders involved, such as giving homebound older adults a project they can work on, and family members may need to assist the elderly as some of them may have difficulty with the complexities of modern technology. 
The interventions can include telephone calls with loved ones, friends, and voluntary organizations. In addition, the social digital leisure is also one way for older adults to combat isolation by creating a sense of community. Agencies or support groups can create volunteerism among older adults. As an example, older adults can utilize mobile phone calls for emotional support to those individuals who are in the most volatile households, or they can also conduct leisure classes through online platforms so that the potential elderly volunteer can make use of their lifelong skills. And lastly, they need to continue exercising through a home-based physical program. Evidence exists that regular physical activity and higher cardiovascular fitness among the elderly can show better responsiveness to vaccines, but investigation remains to be seen for COVID-19. People tend to view older people as frail and helpless, but remember, that older adults have a reservoir of knowledge and skills that have helped them cope with the challenges that they face over many decades. Sometimes, people view older adults as weaker rather than the survivors who know how to thrive. As we move in the peri-pandemic period, we would develop age-friendly communities where older adults have the opportunity to share their experiences with younger generations without the stigma and stereotypes. This is an opportunity to recognize their age as an asset and a source of strength. In past years of living uncertainty, many older individuals stand at the ready, wanting to help and waiting to be asked, a resilient resource waiting in a time of need. Thank you for your kind attention.